Alrighty then, good night human, or morning, or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is you're watching this video. I uh, hope God's been good to you, and as we're about to go through, we're going to look at texturing. Essentially what UV texturing is, is um, think of gift wrapping. Now, whenever you're wrapping a gift, you cannot have a certain pattern that goes on a different size of the gift. All you're really doing is taking a 2D image and wrapping it around a three-dimensional surface. Right, so I'm going to carry you through that. We're going to start with something very simple. Start with something probably simple, like a, a sheet of paper. And then we can move on from there. And I'll show you the different ways you can actually do the mapping. So first of all, let's do what we normally do. And that's going to set our project. Uh, that's what we want to make sure of. So I'm going to just set my project first of all. Make sure it's set to a location that you can find it afterwards. So what I'll do, I can go to um, I have my stuff, and two folders set my project there. Okay, default workspace, and let's go to project window. You could also do it this way, project window, and so let's just accept this, and it's going to create all those different folders for. Um, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to change my workspace from animation to modeling standard so that we can have what we need to see and I kind of like this little help uh, we're not animating right now we're just going to be modeling so it's kind of nice to have different things here let's see go to the way I guess my classic will have to do it. now I have everything over there all right cool so first of all, let's deal with just a sheet of paper and kind of take you through what modeling double. So um, one thing you want to make sure is that you have your Arnold renderer applied because you need Arnold for or uh, texture shading. So first of all, let's work with this. Uh, just a regular plane, just kind of it comes up all centered and everything. And what you want to make sure of is that. Let's just make our plane a, a sheet of paper. So, uh, if you think of a sheet of paper, it's about 8.5 by 11.5. We're going to scale on the x axis and on the z axis. That I'm going to make it 11. That way we get a bigger sheet of paper. Right? Now, I want to also make sure one other thing is that after I've created my scale, you want to freeze the transformation so everything returns back to scale as one right because that does help with the whole uv mapping because if it's scaled there can be some issues in terms of how you unwrap and we'll get the whole unwrapping thing later all right so let's uh, start off here uh let's go to modify here and choose freeze transformation so let's just make sure that we're freezing everything we translate rotate scale all those are fine, so let's just freeze the transformation and you'll see that the scale returns back to 1. Alright, so we call this plane a uh, sheet of paper. What I'll do, very simply, um, let's say I want this to rest on a disk. I'm going to create one more thing. I'm going to create a cube. And we can just scale that cube out, um, let us see, R. And scale that cube out on the x and the z axis. Once we do that, we get certain thickness there. And let's put that out. Okay, let's place that here. Like that. I'm going to move this down using a W. And just to make sure one thing is resting on top of the other thing. You can't really see the difference because we're working with the default materials that we've been given. And I think that's either a Lambert or a Fung, depending. And you can always check your attribute editor to see what that is. So let's just change the color of this for now. What you can do is just right click and hold until you see this comes up. And you can choose Assign New Material. Now, because we're using Arnold, you can hit Arnold and choose AI Standard. This is if you're using a 2017 version. In the 2018 version, you will have something else 
uh, similar to AI standard, or I think AI standard surface or something like that. So I'm going to choose that there in terms of my surface and just pick uh, AI standard shader, right? Uh, I'm not sure why that's not. But I guess I'll just hit the hyper shader and we can work from there. So there's multiple ways you can do something. Right, um, I want that shader. Right, yeah, standard. Not sure why it's not working. Oh, let's just make sure of something. Uh, Windows, uh, settings and preferences, plugin manager. Let's make sure Arnold is actually running. You should look for something called MTOA and it looks like it wasn't. So that's why we're having issues with that um, particular shader. So make sure it's loaded and not just loaded, but auto load as well and just you know, refresh and close that. What will happen now is when I click on this, and right click and choose my assign new material. Arnold comes up properly, AI standard. There we go. And then you can kind of see everything. So that's a uh, thing. I'm just gonna click on it and the AS and I'll just call it um desk ESK. And um we're just gonna make the color something like color of a desk. That's like brown of some sort, uh, like so. Cool. So that's one thing. Right, and you also want Let's just put in a light. Uh, for the light, I'll just choose the Arnold tab. I can just choose um, create and create create a directional light. And for directional light, it's really just a light that's really not. Um, let's just make sure we can. All oh, things. There we go. Because my uh, show was only showing polygons, you couldn't see light a while ago. So, just want to make sure everything is on so you can see them clearly. And we just put a little light there and so we can see what it looks like if you put the light on. Right, you can always increase the intensity and that will just brighten the scene. The main idea is to really get something on this sheet of paper. So, I'm going to right click on this after selecting, assign new material. Uh, it's going to be Arnold shader and we're just gonna choose the same standard. Alright, this will be my paper. Now over here you have your materials and when it comes to materials, very important. Um, materials define the look uh, of the or the feel of the that particular um, object. The the texture defines how it looks. So example if you look at the phone screen, it's really glossy. You might have a matte back. Or if you look at a sheet of paper, it's not exactly the most reflective material. So you can have to look through these different settings and you're able to kind of just define what what looks like. If you want to see more details, however, when it comes to the whole material thing, uh, you can always click on Maya. And if you're using Maya's hardware render, you just get this. But if you are using Arnold, it gives you a more realistic so from here you can actually play with a few things so example here let's just go through a few of them uh, one is your diffuse material which is you know diffuse material has to be that chalky plain flat look just like how paper looks that's what you call a diffuse and if you look at any time at all you see weight that really just tells you the strength of that particular thing so if i lower the diffuse it's going to become black and because diffuse color is white you're lowering the power of that white Right, so if you want something really white, you just up the weight to one. You can also look at roughness as well. You know, how rough that particular okay, roughness is there or versus here. And this has to do with the diffusion. So I'm not sure if you notice any different, but the roughness here makes the material look a little darker versus here. Right here, which makes it look slightly brighter. All right, so you can also you know, rotate around if you want to. 
they provide you with the environment I'll text there. Right, so that just has to do with that part. So in the case of a material, you have diffuse, and we want this to be our paper. Uh, if you want it to be glossy, however, um, you have different things like example reflection. And if you look at it, it says weight for reflection is currently zero. Whenever you have a reflection being the weight of zero, it's not going to have any reflection at all. So if we increase that weight, it's getting more and more reflective. Right? So you can actually play with the different settings. So that's just one part. Uh, another part is your specularity or specular. That is uh, really how light bounces off a surface and what kind of reaction it has when it hits that surface. So uh, if you look at a, 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 a silver ball, uh, when light hits a silver ball, you see this little white, tiny part or white reflection, like a little circle that's inside here. Specularity has to do with that, if you actually want to show that inside your material. So let's increase the weight of this and see if we can see any differences. All right, so if you look at it, when light hits this at a specular, specular of weight 1, you can see the light really just hits that and really bounces off it really brightly. However, if you lower the specular value, you still see that white light, but it's not as powerful. And if you lower it, it becomes more like paper. You can use the specular in conjunction with your um, reflectivity or reflection. And you can see the kind of results you might get. You can even increase the roughness. So if that's you know gonna be really specular and you want it to be rough at the same time, or you don't want it to be rough, it comes off like this. That's what is specular value. It's that white part there. Because if we lower it to zero, you're not gonna get any of that right there. You're not gonna get any um, of that. So this is like a, a little introduction to materials in a little sense. I can't show you every single thing. But I'd recommend definitely going on YouTube and doing some tutorials or even checking the Maya Knowledge um, Desk. They give you a whole lot of um, insightful information. Now let's go persist. Uh, we want this to be paper. So what I'm going to do is focus on getting it to look like paper rather than just give you a, a thing where I go through the entire uh, materials. So you can always check those things. Uh, let's just take off the specular weight and you just want that talking right so that's one and um i'm gonna close that right now if we were to do a quick render uh final render view based on what i have here it just has that look it's just plain boring you know paper now what we want to do is actually apply a texture to it right this is just a material like i said material has to do with how it feels uh, and texture has to do with the look or look and feel right so if you say something like paper what about if on the bin you want to also make sure that's there as well so let's just hit this material or this here this plane and what we want to do is I'm gonna create a really quick texture uh, I'll use Photoshop or we can even go online find a document that's as we have it 8.5 by 11 uh, if we do that um, let's just open something in Photoshop and just create something really quickly I might just grab a picture that I've created from before and um, use that as the texture that goes on this piece of paper so let's open Photoshop and we're not working scale in terms of it. This could be 8.5 by 11 inches. That's fine. Right? Let's see what it looks like in pixels. Uh -huh. And just make sure that um, that's there. This might be a little large, so I'll just press OK. And just work with what it is. What we can also do is change the image size as well. So once that loads up, we're just going to come to and get everything to work out. Wow, it's taking sweet time. Right? Their Photoshop. Lame. Right, so um, that's taking. 
we'll probably do this in another program, but I just, I just have to. So while that's working out, let's create another object we can um, put a texture on. Now, if this is a writing list, uh, we could probably create a ink bottle or something. Right, um, bottle. It's literally coming from a cylinder. For the whole modeling bit, I'll just choose the uh, polygon and I'll just work with the uh, right. So once that's there, I'll just hit P again to see what we get in subdivision axis. I like using CC because I'm coming from a blender background. Uh, I haven't given up on blender, I simply just have to teach um, how to. Right? So that's one thing. Uh, let's change the size of this. Uh, in terms of scaling it, uh, so I'll just that. Very difficult. So, I'm stretching like a, that. Is. Now, in the case I can't see exactly where it is, I just hit spacebar and just come over here and zoom in like me. Right, and just make sure it's resting on the surface. If for any reason I don't like my point of origin or my origin point or my pivot point, I can always move it. So I hit B, that gives me access to moving the pivot point, and I can actually just drop it down here. Whenever I scale or move or rotate, it's gonna scale from here, so you can see that's happening. Because you don't want to create a case where, hey, you want to scale up an item or animate something, and when you're animating it, you have to kind of adjust. You will that. So uh, let's remove some faces. Like I said, while Photoshop is loaded, might as well a few. So we just want to create the basic shape of this thing. And, um, that up. So I'll just hit edge selection mode. If you want to select one edge, click it. The adjacent ones, hold shift and double click. It's going to select everything. Now I have here an ink bottle, like this. And the ink bottle kind of looks like that. Uh, I'm going to hit Ctrl E just so I can, you know, pull that up. I need to pull that in. I prefer to scale it. Ctrl. So I hit that and uh, I'll scale. Why? It's now. It's not a raven, rather. Right? So, E again. Slightly. Hello. I also want to make the uh, consideration for different parts. That's it. Show W. Speed up. Right. And um, what I'll do is just scale this out a bit. Right. So I'll just press the. Um, Get an ensign and get an ensign, we just put that off. Um, let's try again. Uh, all right, let's go back and um, just um, so boom, control E, and let's just bring that up like. Of course, you know, it's an ink bottle. Let's just bring that in slightly. You have to make note that in real life, there are no actual right angle edges. So it really just look like this. And what I could probably do is create a few cuts down here as well, so that we lose that, you know, perfectly defined, um, there. So I'll create a cut here uh, by inserting a edge loop. So I'll just click and hold and create an edge here. And I also want to create one down here. The reason being because when we actually hit smooth, you don't really want to have issues when it comes to that. So I think smooth actually does create a, a thing for you when it comes to that. Uh, but you want to make sure that your smoothening doesn't, you know, go out black. Right, so I'll just hit base, select, select, 
bunch of faces going around me, you know, just a bunch of them. And um, I will just bail those out. And also, back to, you know, these two here. Uh, create one here. And another one. Here. And I'll scale in this one. I like it. Right? And I like creating that extra cut just in the middle. Just for the sake of, you know, proper structure. So, like I was saying, this is like an ink bottle. And um, let me just go back into object mode. And I'll hit that and hide it. Because I want to deal with the base of this um, bottle here. So I don't have to deal with it again. So let me take off the light bit here and the shadows. It's going to wireframe it for a little bit. Right, so we have the base of this thing here. Um, right here it's using a triangle fan method. Um, so I hit face and so you can select um, face. Uh, let's go here, selection. Face selection. So for, um, uh, Right, so delete that uh, edge selection mode and you know double control. Now just uh, and control key again and get that in. Let's just can of those come in like you know typical up a little bit like so. again let's scale that in. that in and control e again and i'm gonna choose to merge so we actually three and to get the smooth mode you can look at the bottle and it won't look too problematic right so object mode that it is that is one more thing i need to do is uh, create a label for it so what i can do is base selection mode here on oh and let me just add here one of those right uh, and here as well so let's create ourselves a this selection sorry right i can go back into you know that and uh create one one face two faces three faces okay. and let's say five faces what we're going to do just press shift d or not we can't do hit that part all right so i'll do this thing i want to copy just those faces but the problem is whenever I copy something like this it's gonna duplicate the object in the same location let's check if that was so that didn't work so I'm gonna paste that back and and see here I can't so let's do this uh, what I'll do for this particular cylinder I will just duplicate it one on top of the other one but what i'll do is hide this original one and for this one i'll go face selection one two, five and because it's a selection we're going to select the inverse and we're going to do everything else leaving just this part and we can call this um ink underscore ink. and can call this first one ink underscore bottle right so now we we'll unhide this uh, H and it's different from right so guess what we're going to do going to talk to you and where that's have to focus on that and Let's just go on base selection and we can choose P and slide it. So I'd rather not, however. So 
it's it's not. So I'll just that in oh not exactly touching anymore, but that's what you um I'm back in perfect again. That's then Right, so that's an ink bottle, and here we go. Let's get this out of the way. One sheet of paper, Photoshop just finally opened. I'm gonna change the image size because it's not really working with something too big. Just make sure you constrain proportions so that when you make one size change, it'll change the other one. So let's shrink it to 3% size. That means so let's uh do that um four point two five. Reason being I'm doing this because the pixels to me don't matter as much. Ah, there we go. Good good. Let's resample that. Um a thousand. So let's work with this. And that's 25%, 50%. All right. So I'll just grab this and we just write some stuff. This is that. This. Yes, and you know, decorate it. Whatever. Right? Doesn't even matter. Uh, and I'll also just throw a pattern on there just for the sake of that. So, um, again, we're in up. I'll just throw on a pattern that will work. Uh, well, pattern there. Brick pattern that's there. Yeah. Let's just pick one. This one works. No, it doesn't even matter at this point. Now let's lower the opacity on that a bit. And we just control Alt S and save this inside our recent places. Hopefully, it'll guide us to the same folder we get to change that one. So, whenever you're saving an image, you want to make sure that you save it in your source images. Because Maya has a structure as to how they want things to work out. So I'm just going to use paper. All right. Press OK. So what we're going to be is attaching this to the 3D object. So here we have one. Um, let's jump into the hyper shader. And um, for the hyper shader, right? Here's how we apply that particular texture to the object. If you notice, when you click on color here, you normally would have a color to but on the right side, you have this thing that looks like a checkerboard. That has to do with textures. That means you can actually create a texture from a bunch of different parameters, whether it be a file or a gradient or anything else. So because we're using a file, let's just hit file and um, image name is going to pop up, open that folder icon. And by default, it goes to your source images folder. So if you press that and press open, this is a letter with gratitude. You press open, open and um, we, we see this. Right, it says teapot, but it really can't fit on it. So, once you do that, that's that's set. The thing is, though, is um, you getting it to show up on this. So, if we hit this thing here, it just pops up and looks really weird. That's because even though we've applied the texture, Maya doesn't quite know how to plot the points in a sense. So, when it comes to that, now you go to UV, UV editor. As long as you have an image, so here's what we need to do. We need to select this letter here, and we need to go right click and choose UV. Let's choose UV shell. Once we hit that, it's gonna pop up and kind of just give you poison, right? So it shows you exactly what you look 
for. And essentially, the way it works is that if I were to go to edge selection, this edge corresponds with up here in the UV editor. This one sideways, and this one down here is for the bottom, and here is for that. So you can always move these, it won't affect what your UV map does. But however, if you were to select example a vertex and you manipulate that vertex, let's say I click on this vertex here, and that's my point, and you can see I have my um, X and Y axis here. Let's just look at this for a second. If I were to plot my point and I move this, like so, it's actually affecting the way it's mapped on that. In the same breadth, if I were to go to edge mode and I decide that, okay, the top edge will only be showing just half. And it actually stretches it because this thing, all it sees is points moving, but the shape of it is just corresponding to the different points rather than the actual shape. shape. There's different ways to plot things. Um, this is just a basic one. In the sense that... Um, like I said, it's working with the four sides. If however our letter was um, shorter, different, because Maya uses um, squares as its UV map, so it's best to use a square image. I'd recommend um, going from, for example, 512, 1024, 248, those kind of um, numbers that's divisible by 512. The, the kind of binary you see. Right, so images don't need to be particularly large. So that's just the basics of UV mapping. Essentially, all it is is getting a shape and um, getting it to fit inside. So let's do the second one, which is this ink bottle here. Uh, right now, the ink bottle isn't saying anything at all. And right now, you can see our shape, right, comes out here. Right, so let's address that. So if you look at it, and I click on all these. While this might be spreaded out, over here in the UV map, it looks like this. Let's create a UV texture for that particular ink bottle. So let's create one using, um, not inches, but pixels. So uh, 512 by 512, and press OK. Uh, let's make it in. Well, I have a Bombay black ink from Dr. Martin. No advertising, but um, it looks. So let's say, example, um, I'm going to increase the size of this image size uh, 1024. And what I want to do, I want to make for mine corresponds to what I see. So I'm going to create a map over you. I don't even know what size I'm working with, but I'm just going to create something here and create a very, very Work with water. I'll just put that. And can move that up. Right. The background, uh, we'll that. Uh, Between black or white, just be a new yeah, we can scale that up. Weird. I always reverse it too. So that's what I'm that's the thing I'm going for. Um right here. Make it interesting by reading. And the gradient would not black to white, but uh, gray. Yeah. So that's there, and uh, okay, and uh, just to be pretty uh, We'll invert it, of course, and get that to scale it out. Get something more like this. And let's just find a decent looking. Um, And of course, I kind of want to see the outline of it. So I'm going to pick that gradient overlay, not necessary. Stroke could be less. We have something. And um, 
I'll just find some online for a barcode specifically. Let's just find one random barcode thing. Uh, oh no, I'll just barcode. So let's just find one. I'm gonna grab a random barcode. Doesn't. Oh, I'll just pick one. Right. Uh, let's borrow you. Copy image. Oh, large. Let's alter that. Minus. Shift Alt. Damn. That over here. Right, so let's say the ink was, you know, and stuff. And I'm um, just gonna borrow thing. Uh, oh, uh, only. Oof. I'm just using the what I have in front of me as like a template. So I'll take a font, make it white. I'll leave. Uh, I'm just making some generic ink here. Be free to buy ink from of had that a wheel on clean biblically I call it UV so UV would be the brand because you know UV has to do it that's actual coordinates for 3D not ultraviolet or not like that Let's call this super super UV black yeah oh the American ink so we got it from. Uh, are we, uh, waterproof. This is left uh, any looking. Water. Light fast. On box. Okay. Do awesome. Awesome. Right. So let's say we have those as our thing, and just them there. And let's brand it. It's supposed to be a feather. Right. Master skill or something. Alright, so let's say we're working this. And that's a UV texture there. I'm gonna save this as 
and we have our source images I'm going to put this in a PNG and I'll just get ink ink bottle or ink table right and press ok so once we have that set up let's come back to Maya um, so we set up our um, stuff here remove the edit that we don't there right so for this one you have to set the material, so assign new material, and we're going to be using the same Arnold shader, the AI standard. Uh, this one could be um, perhaps I'll call it table. And what we want to let's open the hyper shader again because this one never gives you a good enough view. Uh, so once that's done, label. And uh, I'm going to increase the specular. The specular is going to be up there. It's also going to be up there as well. And I kind of want just a slight bit of reflection. You know, just to make it a little glossy in terms of the way it looks. And for the diffuse, let's change that to a file. And that file is going to be for ink table. Press open. And that's what we get. So like I said, by default, it's going to look like rubbish, basically. And um, what you want to do is select all the faces that you need. And we're going to go and follow it. Right click on this, or let's bring up our UV editor so you can actually see when it happens. Right now, what we're seeing is this stuff here. If we're actually supposed to move this stuff. Right, let me just move this so you can actually see what I mean. It's actually corresponding those with this. So that means with the same SRT controls you have, example rotating, scaling, and stuff, you can actually apply to it. But what I'll do, um, I can choose UV and I choose automatic. What that's gonna do is just automatically bend it how it feels like bending. That never gives you uh, that never always gives you the best result. Uh, so I'm just gonna choose um cylindrical and cylindrical can give you some weird looking results as you can see right now um so i'll see what we can do good best plain texturing tool right that looks weird so i'm just gonna what anybody would be my my case just you know undo everything let me highlight this stuff here right Now we choose scale, and before we scale, let's move it up. Everything here, and scale that out like so. We get exactly what we should. That is it. Now, if we were saying that in ink, we could say that's what it looks like. All right. So now you have exactly what you want. Um, here might need some. No, so I took off this smooth a while ago so it doesn't go through the bottle. Because both the bottle and um the thing where okay, no. oh. so I want <clears throat> this to be smooth. All right, so that's a three right there. If we were to go into the whole lighting thing, it looks like it's because of the lights coming from that direction. All right, but if we were to example select both of these. And let's say I want to kind of merge them, or I want label. Follow the ink bottle. At least not apparently it's so it's flat. So when I move the ink bottle now and I rotate it, right? And if I run like so, I can see so how many like that. Right? The bottle is supposed to be black, but I've created a label so and so you can see how that works so I'm going to unhide this page and that's a table with a piece of paper and also for the UV map here it's uh, kind of an ink bottle I didn't create the cover but that is all I hope you kind of learned something from it don't be intimidated by UV mapping there's a lot more you can learn from it but this is just the basics how to get stuff that have the um, the text as you want. So, 
Good luck, have fun, let me save this because it's coming out. So I'm gonna say don't forget to save yours on a regular. Never know what might happen, light might go away if you're in Japan. So it does. So I'm gonna create this as a theme. Um I just call it writing. Right, you can apply it takes pretty much anything. Alright, let you learn some. Bye.